Hello and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Shadeva Roberts. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what's happening here on this channel. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to talk to you today about what love really looks like. And we're in a season and a time right now where, number one, I believe we, we really need to be reminded of God's love for us. You know, just because of the many things that we see in the earth, you know, that are happening, we don't need to begin to question whether God loves us or not. He still very much so loved us. He's loved us from the beginning. And, you know, just because hard things happen or, you know, bad things happen in the earth, it doesn't mean that God's love has changed for us. He's still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. But I believe he also wants to speak to us and minister to us um, in a way that shows us how we are to love, how we can exemplify his love in the earth. And, you know, I don't know if you recognize it now, you know, or if you come to an understanding that God's ways are very, very different from ours. He sees things you know, in a totally different light. We can't even imagine, you know, how God thinks of things and how he sees things. But he wants us to respond in love. He wants us to walk in love. He wants our his love to be shown through us in the earth. But we got to get an understanding of what that love actually looks like in action. And so 1 Corinthians 3.13, New International Version says, And now these three remain. So when all is faded away, when all is lost, Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God says the greatest out of these three, you can have faith, you can have hope. But even in that, the greatest is going to be love. Why? Because God is love. He is love. So the, the subject of love continues to come up. You know, he's going to always be speaking to us from a love perspective because he is love. It's not something that he does. It's actually who he is, and we are to exemplify that love in the earth. You know, I think oftentimes we feel like we're doing such a great job at loving, but I believe most of the time we really fall, we fall very short of what love genuinely looks like. We may be hitting the, you know, the top of the iceberg just a little bit. We may be kind of getting there, but the way that God loves is very different sometimes from how we think we're supposed to love. You know, and I talked a little bit about, you know, love, um, learning to love and learning how to receive love and learning how to give love in the Woman to Woman series. And I touched on some of these topics a little bit more. And love, as I said, just continues to keep coming up because, hey, God is love. So he keeps speaking love to me. So I'm sharing love with you. And I hope that today after I finish, you know, going through these scriptures and talking through this word, that you get a better understanding of what it looks like for us as Christians to love, to exemplify God's love in the earth. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I bless you, Lord. We bless you. We thank you and give you praise for this day. We honor you. We glorify you. And we thank you, Lord God, that we're here because you loved us first. Without your love, we wouldn't have any love to give. Thank you, Lord God, that you give us love. Hallelujah. By your spirit. So we don't have to conjure it up. We don't have to, you know, make believe and pretend. We can give genuine, sincere love by your spirit because you enable us to. So breathe on this word today, Father God. Minister to our hearts, to our minds, Lord. Help us to hear and to see what it is you're saying, what it is you're speaking to us right now, Lord. Most importantly, we just thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for receiving your love. And I pray, Lord, that we never forget that you love us dearly, Lord. So as we press forward into learning how to love like you want us to love, Lord, breathe on us, Lord. Help us and strengthen us in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I said, you know, um, I'm going to move into some scriptures. And, you know, these particular passages of scripture that I'm going to read for you, the title of them is Love in Action. And so um, it's where the Apostle Paul is, you know, he's speaking to the Romans. You know, he's never been to uh, establish a church in Rome, but he figures, hey, let me go ahead before I get there. And, and I, I want to send them a letter. I want to give them a little backdrop on, you know, what does Christianity look like and how can we walk this thing out? And somewhere in the middle there, he begins to speak to them about what the heart of it is. And that is love. And so love in action is what he is teaching them. 
in these particular passages of scripture. So he's showing them how to walk it out. And I believe that that's what we're going to gain today. We're going to learn how to walk love out <laughs> in a natural sense. And we may be doing okay, as I said, but I know all of us can probably be strengthened in some different areas. So I'm going to begin in, uh, let's see, this is Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to start at verse 9. I'm going to go all the way through verse 21, New International Version. And then I'm going to go back through and just kind of walk through these scriptures. So it says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in, ze in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Help us, Lord. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, dear my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, wow, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. So, yeah, I don't know about you, but I can definitely see, you know, a few <laughs> challenging scriptures in there. Um, but it's okay. God enables us by his spirit to do these things, to walk in love the way God sees fit. So let's go back up to Romans chapter 12, verse 9. We're going to start at the top, as I said, and just break it down. Love must be sincere. He's calling us to a sincere, unadulterated love. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. What does it mean to be sincere, though? To be free of deceit and hypocrisy or falseness, earnest, a genuine and real love pure, unmixed, unadulterated, you know, and that is, you know, awesome because, you know, I think about it, as I said, most of the time, what we feel like is genuine love that we're giving to other people is fake, you know, because it is, you know, full of hypocrisy. It is full of falseness. It is full of deceit. It's filled with treachery. treachery it's filled with envy. It's filled with jealousy. It's filled with, you know, bitterness and all those types of things that we think a lot of times that we're loving when in actuality, we may just be giving like acts of service. We may only be scratching the surface as the surface as it pertains to like really genuinely loving someone from a sincere place. And, you know, when I first read this scripture, I was just like, wow, you know, with all sincerity. So that means if I'm, you know, holding things in my heart, if I'm struggling, you know, with different things or whatever, I got to present that stuff to the Lord, you know, and I got to get my heart free so that I'm able to love from a sincere place. And then the Lord says, hate what is evil, hate it. You know, the scripture doesn't talk a whole lot about, you know, things that we're to hate, but Satan, the enemy and evil come up in terms of like things we should hate. So God is saying, if it's something that's evil, hate it, hate it. In, in, in hating evil, that's when we can truly love, you know, because if you hate uh, resentment and bitterness, you hate, you know, being negative and those sorts of things, then love can like freely flow through you because you're not holding on to the negative things and then we're to cling to what is good because you know it's the opposite good and love is the opposite of hate so god is saying if it's evil we're simply to reject dislike hate you know not just just not like it for a period of time but like hate it shun evil and then we're able to give way to true love you know, hallelujah. So, Lord, work, work on my heart. Work on our hearts today, God. Let us be people who can give sincere and genuine love. Hallelujah. Verse 10, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And this is just, you know, it's awesome. It's, it's an awesome 
um, verse to hold on to, to cling on to, you know, in marriage and in relationships, being devoted to one another in love, devotion. What does it mean? Zealous or ardent in attachment. You know, ardent means to be intensely devoted to someone or just devoted, period, period. Being loyal, loyalty and affection. That's what devoted means, you know, honoring someone above yourself. That is something that you have to practice daily in marriage. And as I talked about in the woman to woman series, I believe I touched on that, you know, a little bit in terms of giving love, being able to give love. But being devoted to someone, when you say I do, you're giving your all, you're giving yourself to that person through an act of devotion. And God is saying this is how we love. But in this particular passage of scripture, he's talking about loving other people. Being devoted to other people, not someone that you said I do I do to, but just honoring others above yourselves, loving them with the love of Christ, being devoted, devoted to be a good friend, devoted to pray, devoted to minister to, devoted to love God's way. That's what he's saying that he wants us to do here. And even in, you know, service, just service to people in general. If you're going to serve others, you have to have a devotion in your heart to be able to serve them over the long haul because people don't always reciprocate. Even in marriage, sometimes people don't reciprocate love. You're not always going to get back, you know, like I said, exactly as you um, put out. I believe everything that we put out will come back to us in, in some, you know, shape, form or fashion. And, you know, God may bless you in other ways to receive that love. Prayerfully, it comes back to you where you plant the seed. But in essence, what I'm trying to say is in ministry, you know, uh, on a job, wherever it may be in your family, to your spouse, you know, you give sometimes and then people are, we're all human. So it may not be reciprocated, but you have to be devoted in that thing in order to produce this type of love that God wants us to produce in our relationships with other people, devoted to one another, honoring others above yourself. You know, and I just think, you know, many of us, we, we are here trying to, you know, we want to be the highest in the room. And God is saying, no, I'm, I'm the highest in the room. Make me high. <laughs> Let me be above everything. You understand what I'm saying? So as we make him high, as we lift him up, then his love can, you know, be poured out into us and then we can turn around and give it back to someone else. We we elevate God and his love, his ways above every other thing, not ourselves. And so we're always in the mindset of that we need to be, you know, on top of everything, on top of everybody. Then how do we ever get to a place where we can connect with people? You can't connect with people when you always feel like, you know, you're so much better than them or, you know, whatever. Or even if you're looking at people and feel like they're so much better than you. God is saying, no, let's love. We're all on the even playing field. You know, all of us are going to bend the knee one day before the Lord, you know, um, and, and, and nobody can answer for us but ourselves. So in that sense, we're all on, on a level playing field. Okay, let's move on down to 12, uh, verse 11. Romans 12, 11 says, never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We have to keep our zeal. We have to be earnest. We have to have, you know, fire and passion for the things of God. We have to cultivate that. We got to stir up the gifts on the inside of us and not allow for that fire to dim, allow for it to burn out. God is saying we got to keep that, you know, that zeal and that passion and spiritual fervor for serving the Lord. And I'm going to tell you one of the ways that you can burn, you know, just, just, you know, apathy and lethargy away from you. And that is through fasting and prayer by humbling ourselves. You know, scripture says we, if we humble ourselves before the Lord and pray, you know, turning away from our wickedness, you know, he'll hear us, he'll answer us, he'll heal our land, those sorts of things. But humbling ourselves a lot of times has to do with denying ourselves and true acts of love as we go through these scriptures you're going to see come from us humbling ourselves, you know, and even just as I read through the scripture in the beginning, you know, the issue a lot of time, the hang up with us being able to genuinely love is that we have a me first mentality. We're always thinking of ourselves, always thinking about women, me, 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 me. What can I do? What can I get? How can I get, you know, and God is saying, no, you got to shift that. His ways are not our ways. You know, he doesn't think the way that we think. You know, we may feel like it's love to, oh, I got to take care of me first. I got to do this. I got to do that. But God is saying, no, serve others. As you serve others, I'll take care of you. I'll show you how to take care of yourself in a better way. But don't elevate yourself to the point 
or you can't connect with people where you can't genuinely love them. But yes, that fire for the Lord, you keep that fire burning through prayer, through sp- spending time in God's presence, through praying in the spirit, through reading his word, you know, th- through encouraging yourself, you know, in the Lord by the word and those sorts of things. You have to keep that fire burning, stirring, stirring up those gifts so that we are zealous towards the things of God. Moving on down to verse 12, it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And we are in that season. We're in a season right now. You know, and that's not to say we've not had seasons before. We're in a time right now with so many different things that just happened year after year after year. You're like, oh Lord, what's going to happen next? But the scripture is saying here, part of love, I believe, accepting God's love, trusting in his love, trusting in his grace. In this particular verse right here, be joyful in hope. You know, every day we have to take our joy. We have to, you know, pull on the Holy Spirit and ask for him to give us that joy. And as we're joyful, it gives us hope. As we reflect on good things, as we reflect on God's goodness and his blessings, you know, for us and reflect on times past, it says how, you know, God has brought us through, you know, so many different things. Then it helps us to have hope, being patient in affliction. You know, many around us, we've been afflicted ourselves, you know, throughout these past few years. And so God is saying, be patient, be patient, even in affliction. I'm here. It won't last forever. Receive my love. This is where you're going to receive his love. Be patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop petitioning God. The, you know, don't stop petitioning the throne room of grace. Don't stop going to him. Don't stop hoping. Don't stop believing. You know, and you know, in this particular, if we bring it into context, uh, these people, you know, who are gonna be new Christians and some who are just hearing about the word of God, you know, new converts and those sorts of things. What Paul is saying here is that he wants them to be joyful in hope and the hope of salvation and the hope of what he's speaking to them about, patient in their affliction, because not everyone agreed. You know, this is the early church where people are just like, Who are y'all talking about? What Jesus and who said he rose from the grave? I don't, I don't believe that. Where y'all get that from? <laughs> you know, people were just like, uh uh-uh. uh, y'all can get away from here with all of that. We are not doing this Jesus thing. So he's saying, be patient in affliction. God is there. He's with you. He loves you. You know, he's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you out and be faithful in prayer. Keep praying about these things that I'm teaching you so you will learn and your roots will grow down into the Lord. So Paul was really ministering to them in that moment, you know, um, as he was sharing, you know, the word of God with them as he, well, well, as he was you know, giving them, you know, truth, you know, based off of prophecy and those different things that he knew, but telling them about Christ, he was sharing those things, but he understood where they were, even though he hadn't physically been with them. But I believe this scripture can apply to us as well. And so, um, yeah, just, just constant communication with God, you know, is what would give us clarity. It'll give us peace and it will give us hope. We receive all of these things by his love. Hallelujah. So Romans 12, 13, moving on down, says, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And, you know, as I, I, like I said, as I'm going back through these particular scriptures, as I said, I touched on, you know, many of these different things when I went through, you know, the woman to woman series and just talking about love. But as I said, here we are again. God wants us to bring these points home as it pertains to love. So share the Lord's love with people, you know, who are in need and practice hospitality. He wants us to be a blessing, you know, to those in need. Um, you know, he wants us to open up our hands, you know, so that we can put ourselves in a position to give, you know, when you leave your hand open, you're giving something to someone and, and our natural reaction is to just do this. But God wants us to live in a place where we're just like, Lord, I'm giving and I trust you to give back to me. I trust you to be a blessing to me as I give, you know, as I'm sowing these different seeds, you know, acts of kindness and those sorts of things. I just believe your blessings will flow back to me because that's what your word promises me is I do these things that you're going to bless me. Hallelujah. But even, um, you know, to, to move past that, you know, um, as Christians, God wants us to just do it from a place where we just love, where we just get so thrilled about seeing other people blessed, just doing something for someone, not expecting anything in return. Also knowing 
you know, that that's God's way. You know, that's his His character. He gave to us when we weren't giving anything to him. He gave to us when we didn't love him. He loved us first. So he showed us, you know, how we are to give. Give, you know, and, and, and you know, God puts everything before us. And, you know, he, the gospel is definitely sweet. And he hopes that we will grab onto it and receive his love and receive salvation and all of those things. But many have rejected and are still rejecting God's love even today. But in it all, he still loves us. And through his word, he's teaching us how we can get that same type of love to others. It's going to require something of us. It requires something of us. And many times you, you may not get something back, you know, in that particular moment. But there's rewards for us in heaven if we just continue to move forward and do those things that God, you know, has called us to do. OK, so as I move into verse 14, just talking about giving and not getting something back. <laughs> OK, this one kind of hits us in the face. Verse 12, uh, I mean, Romans uh, 12, verse 14 says, bless those who persecute you. And it goes even further to say, bless and do not curse. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So, you know, we are just so taught in society and by society standards that we are to give only with there's reciprocation, as I just said, you know, and, you know, God wants us to get to the place where we are giving without an expectation for return. But then he takes it a step above that. And, you know, for many of us, it's easy for you to give to someone you love, someone you're trying to be a blessing to, you know, that you care about. But what about when God says, bless those who persecute you? Oh, my goodness. And don't curse. Don't curse them. Because, the, the, you know, our first response can be, uh-uh, you know, <laughs> all every negative thing you can think of will come to your mind to curse that individual, to curse something going on in their life. And it's not that you may use a curse word. You just may say a whole bunch of negative stuff. You may just, you know, hurl insults or say negative things or bad things, you know, that you hope will happen to them as a result of them hurting you, persecuting you, you know. And so just bringing it into today, you know what I'm saying? God wants us to love, you know. His ways are not our ways, as I said. You know, and some of us couldn't even fathom, you know, blessing someone who persecuted us. You know, um, you know, we we can, like I said, easily and freely give to those that we love. Oh my God! But when you think about someone who's offended you, someone who's harmed you or done you wrong, you're like, I am not, you know, <laughs> getting ready to be a blessing to this person. And God is calling us to it. You know, I just think about times in my life, you know, where I may have had, you know, enemies or whatever. And the Lord has told me, you got to get your, you got to pray, you know. And sometimes that's the very blessing that we have to do, praying for our enemies. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, even just context in terms of the scripture, uh, what Paul is saying to them, to the Romans is you have to, Bless those who persecute you. So, you know, um, many of the people who were, 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 were persecuting the early Christians were people who were learned in the word of God. They knew scripture. They knew prophecy. They knew all that. They wore robes. Okay. They stood in temples, those sorts of things. But whenever, you know, people begin to talk about Jesus and salvation and resurrection and those sorts of things, persecution came from every direction and jealousy. Oh my God. Jealousy, you know, as Paul and, you know, the, the, the disciples and the apostles were doing miracles, performing miracles. You wouldn't believe that those were in robes, those who stood in the temple, who stood up and read the word to people, you know, read these different prophecies and the law of Moses and all of that were the very ones who were jealous and taking these men captive and putting them in chains and flogging them and harming them and doing all these different things. But here it is, as Paul is speaking from his experience with God, from God opening up his blinded eyes, he's saying, even when they persecute you, bless them and don't curse them. Your reward is going to be in heaven. When God sees you standing up to this in love, your response is to just trust in me. Do as I say and you'll get the reward. That's that's hard. That's weighty. That's weighty. But nevertheless, it's what the word says. Hallelujah. And so moving on down, um, we're going to go into verse 15. It says, rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn and rejoicing with those who rejoice 
it sounds so simple and we think, oh yeah, I'm doing that already, you know, because <laughs> we think so highly of ourselves. We feel like we just, we, we doing everything, you know, but I want to say this, a lot of times it's hard for us to rejoice with other people, especially when God bless somebody real good. Oh Lord, uh, uh, envy and jealousy. And, you know, we start looking at all the stuff we ain't got, you know, all the stuff we wish we had. And, and if we care, if we're not careful, the enemy start whispering to us, well, why you ain't do it for you? Why this thing? When is your time going to be? And see, that keeps us from being able to rejoice with those who rejoice, you know, but it blesses the Lord when we're able to see somebody bless real good. And we say, oh my God, Hallelujah. I celebrate with you. I'm grateful to God for doing these things in your life. You know, as we say in church sometimes, if he's, you know, and if he's blessing my neighbor, then that means he's in the neighborhood. It's coming my way. You know, that's the type of response he wants us to give. Not, hmm, mm hmm, God blessing her. Mm hmm. I wonder when mine gonna happen. You know, well, you know, she didn't do this or she didn't do that. So and so and such and such was going on. Her. I don't know why God, but you know, we tend to do that. <laughs> so we think that these words are just so easy. Oh yeah, I got, I, I, I can do that. No, sometimes it's hard for us. It's a struggle for us to rejoice with other people who are rejoicing. But God is saying that's the heart he wants us to have. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Celebrate with them. Celebrate the goodness of God. Celebrate their healing. Celebrate their miracles. Celebrate how God is pouring into their lives, how he turns over a new leaf and does great things in their lives in various seasons of their lives, as you can see. Uh, and then it says, mourn with those who mourn. And um, the gift of presence is so key. It's so key. And it took me a long time. I had to get out of myself as it pertains to these types of things because uh, I struggle with, you know, having long periods of mourning myself. And so whenever someone else had to mourn, it would always wake up those things in me. And so it was hard for me to be there, to be a shoulder, to be someone, you know, that a person could lean on because I was dealing with my own stuff. You know, but God says to mourn with those who mourn. But the gift of presence, as I said, it's just such a blessing. It's not always that, you know, we have to go and give words and we got to pray, you know, four to seven scriptures and we got to tell them, you know, give them answers for what's happening and those sorts of things. But mourning is a part of life. We go through seasons of mourning. We go through seasons of trouble, go through seasons of pain. You know, it's just like I wish we all probably wish we'd never had any hard thing that we'd ever have to go through. But the reality of this life is that we will go through things. And so God is saying, Mourn with those who mourn. Give them the gift of your presence. That shows the love of God. This is indeed love in action. Being there with someone holding their hand. If you it just just feeling their heart, crying with them. You know, sometimes people just need to know somebody else feels, they understand. You know, and if they don't understand this specific situation, they could just be here with me and love on me in this moment, and that will be a blessing. Uh, moving down to verse 16, it says, Live in harmony with one another. Lord, don't we need harmony right now? Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. And the next part says, don't be conce conceited. Do not be conceited. So do not be proud and do not be conceited is what helps us to be willing uh, to associate with people of low position. You know, and what 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 I believe that, um, you know, scripture is talking about here. Um, and what Paul is referencing here is, you know, like I said, there were a lot of people who just were so lifted. They they were so lifted because they knew the word or because, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up in the temple and I, you know, uh, got 47 years, of, you know, uh, uh, studies of the you know law and blah, 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 and all these different things or whatever. And, you know, when, you know, people are puffed up in that way sometimes or when they feel like their, their knowledge, you know, make the scripture you said knowledge make makes people puff up sometimes um it keeps you you know as i was saying earlier from just being able to relate to other people so people in low position you know um the the apostles and the disciples talk real heavily to people about you know when you see someone that is poor do what you can to help do what you can to be a blessing to those you know in need and that's already here in the scripture you know but people that you feel are like lesser than you or you know in in, in lifestyle or whatever you may have this or you may have that you may look down on people that's what he's saying don't elevate yourself you know don't let your status don't let your education don't let your knowledge even of the word of god cause you to be puffed up make you feel like you're better than other people 
um, but be willing to associate with people of low position. They weren't able to reach these people, the lame and the beggars and those sort of people who would sit beside the road and, and you know, beg for people, you know, to come by and, you know, please heal me and I need to be healed. I need to walk. I need to see those sorts of things. If they weren't willing to um, associate with people of low position, you know, when people were coming to, um, amongst them when they were ministering those sorts of things you know some would be like who is this person coming in here off the street you know smelly you know got these nasty clothes on and they may just be sitting there quietly you know i just think about that even in church sometimes you know if someone comes in and looks different than us or you know doesn't look like they're you know whatever we 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 tense up we freeze up you know what i'm saying and we we immediately think harm you know but we God wants us to get to the place not where we're being ignorant, you know, and, you know, not protecting ourselves or, or using wisdom. But, you know, when people come in, oftentimes it's just like, okay, can y'all show them my love first, you know, before you start judging them, before you start, you know, oh, I don't want them to touch me or get too close to me and this and that, you know, maybe they need a bath. Maybe we're the person who's supposed to help them get a bath or change the clothes or, you know, whatever. And I'm just, you know, take a moment here. Um, which I love to do and just brag on my wonderful, you know, husband. But when we were, you know, dating early on, um, I just remember a time where um, my, he shifted my perspective on, you know, things like this. And uh, I just remember pulling up into, you know, a not so good area of town. And when we pulled up outside, there was a guy, you know, who was knocking on other people's, you know, everybody's windows and stuff like that. And, you know, he was begging, you know what I'm saying? He was looking for somebody to give him something, but he was specifically looking for money. I believe he was just hungry, you know. But as I said, my first response was like, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, he's knocking at the window, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff or whatever. But being the fearless man of God that my husband is, you know, and, 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 and he was so much younger then, but it was just in him. You know, he got out of the car, you know, and I'm just like, oh, Lord, he done left me in the car. But I'm like, what is he doing? Left me in the car. You know, I, I like the doors or whatever. But I just watched him show the love of God in front of me to this man with no fear. He got out. He took him into a restaurant. He went and got him some food. The man came out. He asked me if he needed anything else. And, you know, I was just like... Where, is, where did he come from? Like, how? who are you? <laughs> but it was just a blessing to me to be able to see that and it shifted my focus. And so now that's just one of the things that we do, you know, even with our children, we try to make sure that they recognize that, you know, everybody who's on the street, you know, isn't there just because they're lazy or because, you know, uh, you know, or, or don't be afraid of people because they, you know, might look like they smell or whatever the case is. We try to get them into the mode of giving. If you got something to give, I don't care if it's just a bottle of water you hadn't opened up. Share, be kind, be a blessing, you know, to that person. Yes, you want to use wisdom, you know what I'm saying, and those sorts of things. But when you have an opportunity, you follow the Holy Spirit's leading and you give. And so we, you know, we make little, you know, packets and different things like that because we want to be a blessing to those who are in need. And, you know, I know we were, you know, talking about, you know, people in low position. And, and as I said, that could be even just, uh, career wise or whatever, but that just, you know, what I feel like the Lord wanted to say in that moment, we just got to be more willing, you know, to reach out and give. And it's not always easy, you know, and I can't say, you know, that sometimes I, I don't still have those moments where I'm just like, oh, okay, Lord, you know, <laughs> going down here, going to this particular place and they're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to trust you, you know, all is well, you keep us safe, you know, those sorts of things or whatever. But anyway, he's calling us, you know, not to be elevated, you know, and feel like we're too good. That's that's really what it comes down to. Too good to associate with those in low positions. So verse 17, we're going to move on along. It says, do not repay anyone for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. And ooh, that, that one is, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one. <laughs> but the part, do not repay anyone evil for evil. It just goes back up to, you know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Take your hands off of it so no judgment comes to you. But trust me, my righteous judgment will take care of whatever. If you were done wrong unjustly, I got it. Don't you worry, I got it. But be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. What was he saying to those people, you know, in this particular verse, you know, as Christians, we are to live our lives out loud, you know what I'm saying? And so the Lord wants us to make sure that wherever we are, that we're doing to the best of our knowledge uh, to exemplify his character, you know, just in the earth, just, just strive to live a godly example, to please, or not, it doesn't say to 
to please everyone, but to do right in the eyes of everyone. Our doing right ultimately is going to be judged by God. That doesn't mean that we are to strive to please people because even when you're doing something right by God's standards or something that you know uh uh you don't feel like a, a conviction about or whatever the case is um you know uh, people will still judge or people may still call you wrong they call you wrong when you're doing something extremely right you could be doing the very thing that God is saying for you to do in the moment and people are like no hold on no, no, who told him you know they're supposed to be doing that or whatever you have to follow the Lord and follow his leading. But the, the the thing here is to strive to exemplify the character of God, to strive to live godly, you know, among everyone. You know, when you, you know, uh, have an opportunity, you know, to uh, uh, just, you know, go at it with somebody or, or whatever the case is, to lose yourself in a sense. You know, scripture is saying, you know, you got to strive. We got we got to elevate above that. And, and we're all human. And you have those moments, you know, where people try to catch you with your, you know, pants down in a sense and try you. But, you know, the character of God, what God is saying, I want you to get to the place where my character comes out. Well, your response is what, you know, um, I would do in those moments. And that is your doing. Because we know, as scripture says, we know better. You know, so we are to do better because we know better. God is saying, okay, you know what I require of you. You know, you may mess up at times, but, you know, at the end of the day, when we know better, we do better. And and, and as it says, you know, kind of what this scripture is saying here. All right, so moving on down to verse 18. It says, if it is, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Live at peace with everyone as far as it depends on you, okay? Even if someone is nasty, if they're hateful, if they're rude, as it depends on you, God is saying, live at This is how you show my love. I choose to live peace with you. Uh, you know, you doing what you're doing. You feel how you feel, you know, about me, respond towards me or whatever. But I'm going to do my part and I just choose to walk in the love and in the peace of God towards you. Simple as that. And that's what he's saying, you know, um, as it depends on you. So, you know, people can't take your peace unless you give it away. They can't take it unless you give it away. So we have an opportunity. Somebody, you know, people do stuff all the time. You know, you could be like, man, you know, you could lose your whole day. You can lose a week. You could lose a month or a year based off of one person's actions in a moment. But what I found is. A lot of times you have to see past actions. You got to see past what, you know, uh, uh, comes at you or whatever, because people be dealing with stuff. They be going through things. And it, it, a lot of times it may not be you. You just may be targeted in a moment. You know, I've had those kinds of experiences or whatever. And, you know, that's what God is saying. As it, as it depends on you, still strive to walk in my peace. Strive to walk in my peace. You know, they did a number of different things to Jesus. And even Paul here, as he's writing these things, you know, to uh, the Romans, I mean, he was just dragged away. You know, he was flogged. I mean, he was whipped. I mean, you name it. You know, he was speaking one time and they, you know, whopped him upside the head while he was speaking. Just so many different things, you know. He didn't, you know, uh, 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 fight back. He just, you know, accepted it. This is my persecution. I'm trying to serve the Lord. I'm trying to do what God has called me to do. And I'm going to do that. And as it pertains to me, as it depends on me, I'm going to walk in peace, you know. You know, and God is so faithful. I just think about even in that, all the persecution he suffered, you know, there were still times where, you know, the Lord would just bring him out and just bless him, you know, when things should have been more harsh, God would just pull back on those sorts of things or whatever. So God is just faithful. He loves us. He cares us. He sees it. He just wants us to continue to show his love. Verse 19, and we're almost done here. It says, do not take revenge. Yes, sir. Do not take revenge. My dear friends, believe room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. At least I know three times as I've gone through this, at least three times God has mentioned us not repaying evil for evil. He's, he's said to allow him to do what he does. He is going to avenge. He says, leave room for God's wrath. So if you're avenging, you know what I'm saying? I bust the windows out your car. You know, if you're going, you know, taking matters into your own hands, 
where's the room for the wrath of God? Where's the righteous judgment, you know, that can come, that can actually produce fruit in those situations? It won't come if we're trying to do it, you know, uh, ourselves. Uh, we have to walk in love. And it goes a little deeper here in verse 20 says, but on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, mm -mm -mm, feed him, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. <laughs> My goodness. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. That's a true test of faith. But I also want to point something out. This is the revelation I received from the scripture. If your enemy is hungry, sounds like humbling to me. So if God is saying in the, in the, the previous scripture, leave room for my wrath. Remember I said his righteous judgment will come in. Okay? Righteous judgment. So if God is allowed to move in, it says if your enemy is hungry. Typically, our enemies, you know, they try to set themselves in a high place. You know, they, they may look like they're doing good. It may be the reason why they mess with you, <laughs> you know. But God, this I just hear humbling here. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. So that means when you get an opportunity, you see that enemy of yours low, you don't say, that's what you deserve. You need to be hungry. You need to be thirsty. I'm going to let you sit here and die. The Lord says, no, give him something to drink. Give him something to drink. And what does it do? It will reap, burn, heap burning coals on his head what is that going to be shame shame and as i said god's ways are not our ways that person or that enemy could be saved in that moment by seeing you show god's love when you had an opportunity to pay them back you had an opportunity i caught you you know with your tail hanging out i caught you with your pants down i could let you have it right now I could let you have it, but I'm going to let God do his thing. That's what God is saying. That's love in action, even when it's hard, y'all. Even when it's hard. That's what he's calling us to. Last scripture, or last verse here, and this is uh, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And the two of those go together. If we're not overcome by evil, you overcome with evil, you're going to say, I'm glad you down. I'm glad you messed up. That was good for you. You deserve every single thing that's coming to you. And I hope more comes. But what does that do to your heart? It turns you into a villain. It, it, it makes you become, you know, be overcome with evil. But God is saying, overcome evil with good. By you doing what I said to do, then you overcome evil with good. And that takes root in your own heart. You know, if you respond in such a venomous way to one person, all that does is build over time. And the same is true for the good that you do. You respond in a, with a good heart, in a good way, and that will build over time. When you recognize that God is in control, he loves you. He's a blessing to you. He'll keep you. He'll protect you. And if you're done wrong unjustly, he'll take care of it. And I just love, you know, um, how this entire thing just closes out with, um, just just love you know just being overcome with good this world you know could just use all of that right now just some good in the earth just examples of good some reminders of good you know and you know us just a little bit at a time you know allowing god to work through us and in us i believe that love can be cultivated in the earth and god's name will be glorified you know, as we do things his way, which are so contrary to this world, walking in his love, walking in his divine leading and his blessings, the world would be a better place. It would be blessed. I'm not a, you know, um, <laughs> uh, hoping for a world peace, you know, person, you know, but what I'm saying is there, there's change that can be made. You know, it takes a long time and, you know, it's little by little. You know, and we can't feel like any of our efforts are in vain. God is saying, do these things and there'll be rewards. We have to trust in him. The reward, you know, may be seen here on the earth or the reward may be in heaven. Ultimately, we have to follow his lead, though. Do what he says and trust in him to get, you know, um, to get those benefits. And, you know, I just pray that this word encourages you today to just, you know, look at your life. Look at how you're loving you know, think about these particular scriptures or whatever and begin to put, you know, the way God wants us to do love, put those love, you know, um, uh, actions.
actions into practice. Begin practicing love this way. Practice makes perfect. You know, the more we do it, the more we do what the word is saying, following the Lord's lead, the better we get at it each and every day. And, and you know, I believe God just adds a blessing to that. Um, so I just pray that this word bless you on love, that you'll review and turn it over in your heart. But I want us to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I bless you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify you, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that these words would take root in our hearts, Father God, and that we just be little vessels of love for you, Lord, in the earth, Lord God, that you show us, you know, different people that you want us to love on and minister to, Father God. We trust you, Lord God, to just lead us in all that we do and pray that you be glorified as we take steps lord god to put love into action in the name of jesus christ lord god we honor you hallelujah so we got an understanding today of what love looks like god help us lord each day to grow in this love your love the way that you love father god and i just pray lastly lord god that we will all be reminded of your love for us because if we know that you love us, God, it helps us all the more to be able to give love to others, Lord God. So we bless you, Lord. We ask and pray, Lord God, you will breathe on these words. Bless us, Lord, and help us in all of our ways. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. May this world be changed by your love. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys be blessed, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.